So look at your public void set servings. So right now we have int x in there, like we're going to tell it how many servings to set. So what we can do is we can actually change this to be a different class type. So you're not just sending it like an int or a double or a string. So come in here and we're going to change this to RSVP. It lets me do that. RSVP and we're going to name that response. So the type RSVP response to the variable name. Okay, go ahead and click save. And it doesn't like that because we haven't created RSVP yet and we haven't created that over here. So what I want you to do is in lesson 16, make a new class called RSVP and only have public class in there. And you're going to write a little code just like this. So the class and the constructor have the same name, both called RSVP, and we're going to send it a Boolean. Boolean is true or false. Attend is going to be a B. And then don't forget to put in your data variable down here or your data member. Okay, so now we have RSVP created and now we need to call on it from lesson 16. Okay, so we're going to come into lesson 16 and we're going to talk about anonymous variable types, but right now we're going to do RSVP. We're going to call it guest, that's what we're going to name it, equals a new RSVP. And since we're sending it a Boolean, you can pick either true or you can pick false. So I'm going to send true. So now this both declares and instantiates the RSVP object. So now we want to take our INA our INA object. We want to call on the method that uses this RSVP, which is set servings. So we're going to do INA dot set servings. And it's going to expect that RSVP object, which we had named guest. Now this is done in two lines of code. So we create RSVP guest, we tell it the value, we send the value. So one of the things that we can do is create an anonymous object, which means that we don't name it. So we're not going to call it guest. This is something we've kind of done a little bit before, but this is going to cut out a little bit of our variable naming needs. So all we're going to do is we're going to do ina.setServings, and I'm going to copy and paste that. And then you don't even need to put in anything that has guest in it. Just do that new RSVP true. Make sure the number parentheses match. And give it a semicolon. This accomplishes the same thing from lines 14 and 15. So what took two lines to do in creating a new variable one line without having to create a variable. Now you do need to know that there's a difference, but when you're writing your code, either one of these will work. You're accomplishing the exact same thing. This is in two lines, this is in one line, this is a little cleaner, but this is still correct. So just you need to be aware that there's two different ways to accomplish the same task. Okay, let's play a little more. So come on down. And we're going to say RSVP, so another RSVP object, and we're going to call it guest2. And we're going to say guest2 equals guest. So up here in this first RSVP line, we created a brand new guest from an RSVP object. Okay, so in this line, in line 14, we actually created a new object because it says new in it. That's a new object. Now, in here, we don't actually have a new object created here because there's not an equal sign. But guest2, we're just setting guest2 equal to the reference of guest. So this is not 
disk2 is not a new object. It's just using the reference from guest. Now this, the best way to explain how this is not creating a new object is like, think about your mom's actual name. Okay, your mom's name is guest. It's declared she's a new object. When you're born and you start calling her mom, you don't make a whole new person to call mom and then also another person that's called by her name. She just knows that when other people call her by her first name, she can respond. And then when you call her by mom, she responds. So it's the same object, but it goes by two different references. So let's see what that looks like. So we'll do system dot out print line, and we're going to just print a Boolean test. So, oh, I also forgot a dot, which will give me an error. Okay, so we're going to print a Boolean test. So this is going to be true or false. So we're going to see if guest is equal to guest two. And remember, when you're running a test, it's double equals, not just one. One equals, you're setting something equal to something else. Two equals, you're testing to see if they're equal. So go ahead and click run. And it's true. Guest is the same thing as guest two. So what this is not saying is that they are the same thing with the different with the same answer. They're saying that they refer to the same object. So now if we came down and we actually created a new RSVP, we named it guest three equals new RSVP and we're going to say false. Okay, and if we did a system.outprint and we said guest equals guest three, it's going to give us a false. Okay, we have an error here. Guest three cannot be reserved to a variable because I have a space in between guest and three. So fix that and then go ahead and run it so it should give us true and then false. Great. Now we expected that false because guest is true and guest three is false. But now let's see if we make them both true if they're equal. So hit run and it still gives us false. What's the deal with that? So this double equal is not looking at the content of guest and guest three. The double equal is testing to see if these variables are references of each other. So I'm gonna make a note over here because the double equal is not gonna test the content of guest and guest three and see that they're both true. It's testing to see if guest and guest three are referencing the exact same object, which they're not. Okay, go ahead and save everything. For lesson 16, you have some questions and you also have a project in your book. Did everyone upgrade to the new PDF? So it's called Project Gas Mileage. So honestly, this stuff that we've done in lessons 15 and 16 is the hardest that you will encounter, not just in the intro, but in the AP as well. So it does not get harder than lessons 15 and 16, but at the same time, this is going to require a little bit of work on your part to really comprehend what we're doing here. So you have some questions, you have this project, please let me know if you run into any issues. Good luck.